of saying the word name. So that's, that's the question. I'm sorry, were you right here? Okay. Everybody else ready? The mic. The mic. Calling the August 3rd, 2017 Design Review Board meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is to consider the July 6, 2017 minutes. Do we have anybody who is any questions or is willing to make a motion for the approval? I was not present at the meeting, so. I move that we approve. I second. Okay, it's properly moved and seconded. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, next item on the agenda are announcements. Staff, do we have any announcements? No, hey, I don't think so. Nope, okay. No announcements at this time, so that takes us to items to be heard. The first item up is the Farmer's Market Ordinance. Do we have a staff presentation? Yeah, we do. <clears throat> Good afternoon, evening. Um, this was heard uh, before the last DRB and it was continued so that staff could um, get with the farmer's market <clears throat> people um, who are interested in, in this ordinance and uh, we did do that. Um, I met with uh, approximately four or five um, of the uh, citizens here and <clears throat> they, uh, from that meeting, they did um, provide some suggestions which are in your packet here. Um, let's see what page. It is right after the first draft ordinance and they made some suggestions. The, the main thing was that they wanted to be um, permitted through the outdoor event permit application process and then have these um, couple of other items on here. Um, they wanted the farmers markets and their vendor tents to be at least 50 feet set back from the Highway 98 and the temporary A-frame signs to be set out on the venue properties in view of Highway 98 at 7 on the in the morning of the market and removed within one hour of the market ending. Um, basically, the reason that we are addressing the farmers markets uh, is because on Scenic 98, the tents are not allowed as um, temporary structures. So um, the location of some of the, uh, the farmers markets <clears throat> were within that 400 foot scenic corridor and therefore tents were not allowed. They are only allowed um, a limited amount of time by, for nonprofits and so therefore if they wanted to have the tents in the scenic corridor we would need to mend the ordinance. Um, then came about that there are additional there's additional criteria regarding signage and, and so forth. So really what we're trying to do is, is work with the, the group who wants to sponsor the farmers markets and also the DRB board and come to something that's gonna be um, uh, suitable for, for all parties involved. Um, so therefore, they have made their requests um, and I have met with Mac last week and this afternoon to finalize a third um, option or uh, basically the second a revised draft ordinance which took out a lot of the, the verbiage and is leaving it to be reviewed in the outdoor event permit application. Um, but then we did want to preserve um, a few of the items or memorialize them in ordinance form um, so that it wouldn't be subjective. And um, I'll, go, I'll go through it here if you have the, um, 
the handout that you got when you arrived here. Basically, 30A, we were, because they, they weren't really, um, had, didn't have the issues of the tents and so forth um, that 98 has. We basically just are allowing farmers markets as temporary uses and that they would go through the permitting process through Walton County as any outdoor event events would. Um, on page two is where we have um, really put most of it to um, being going through the outdoor event permit application. However, there are some, there's an additional verbiage um, describing what a farmer's market is um, and consists of uh, as far as percentage of uh, food product and non-food product items that can be allowed for sale at the farmer's markets. Uh, part of the reason we did this, we didn't want it to really turn into something that's just an event that allows tents um, every weekend or however often the board determines they think these uh, farmers markets should be allowed. Uh, we also had the um, concern over signage and uh, they, they were requesting um, sandwich board signs and uh, you know we we're just having a, a struggle with um, farmers markets that are not tr truly a farmers market they're they're really just events and then that would if if you depending on the frequency that they're allowed to be you would have tents there for um, I don't know how many days if they wanted two a week or um, one a week or if you decide twice a month that's how many times you may have tents that could be visible um, from 98 and we also have the concern about the um, signage so we did limit the signage to um, approved monument signs or ground signs that um, would have reader boards um, on them that can advertise for the farmers market as people pass by. Um, Is it day frames? Hmm? Is it signage day frames? No, we did no, not. Like sandwich boards? No, we did not okay. address that, so those would not be allowed. Okay. Um, right. Signage is uh, the very last item on page three. Uh, signage is allowed only on an approved reader board on the main mo monument sign. Okay. So, you know, these are our suggestions, mine and, and Max, um, to, uh, to, to ease what we originally proposed, um, but still provide some guidance, but we're certainly open to, um, the DRBs, the board members' concerns, and then whatever you hear from the, the public here who's, um, I'm sure, going to make some comments. Thank you, Vivian. I, I have one question, and, and I apologize if you explained this and I missed it, but at the top of page three, um, paragraph C1, um, is, the, is there a, something missing from this? Three. Each market may only operate per location between the hours. Oh, so. wait. Um, yes, there is. If you look to the right, there's a com little comment there. Insert frequency here. Uh, oh, one, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. One yep. per week or one per month, et cetera. Um, that's where Mac and I felt that, you know, it would be good for the board input to okay. determine the, uh, the frequency that um, now, now I understand the comment you made. Okay, yes. very excellent. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to try to determine that today. May I ask a question? Yes. I, I was not at the meeting last week, I mean last month when it was, this was brought up. <coughs> Are there some uh, venues that uh, that the, this group has in mind uh, that would help us understand better what we're yeah. addressing here? Yes. Um, one has been operating um, at Grand Boulevard, and um, there have not been any complaints. It's, it is actually out of sight of the, the corridor. Uh, we do have 30 Avenue um, 
now that is wanting to do uh, to do the farmers markets and interest in from um, seascape so uh, both of those would be probably a little bit well 30 Avenue would be much more visible and um, uh, seascape I'm not sure I, they do have an area towards the back that's common area that I think would you know would be sufficient for them but that's one of the things we just we want to keep it back from the, from the road and so yeah those are two new venues okay do we have any other questions from the board now um, madam attorney we something that always is awkward I think is is uh, the pro proper parliamentary procedure is that we have a motion in play before we invite public comment but in this case I think we've got a broad enough amount of input is it acceptable for me to invite public comment before we make a motion yes okay thank you um, in that case everyone comfortable with me opening this up for public comment since we've got yeah. folks in the audience yeah, one, uh, great um, one quick thing first okay um, between because this is the first time we've seen this <laughs> tonight yeah we yeah. just the, finished the it one. so between can you just quickly tell us the major changes between the draft we had at the last meeting and this draft I'm trying to get through it quickly at between yes well it is it is much shortened of um, the 30a we just basically relegated to going through the um, outdoor event um, permit process and um, and specified the locations um, where they can be and for 98 Yes. Limitation. Yes. And we did um, we did take out the well the ten percent of non food <coughs> products. Um, we took out all restrictions on on that um, so that it would allow for ten percent of uh, um, basically if it's stores that want to have a promotion that type of thing um, if they want to have a face painting booth if they want to you know it would be open to interpretation as to what they want to market in that 10 percent um, so and that is also a number that is you know that you can make comments on or or make decisions on we're not we we're not set in stone on that 10 percent we just felt after looking at a lot of ordinances that that would be a good mix to try and keep it from being a more of a um, an event uh, rather than farmers market not a farmers market um, we took out the 200 mile radius that um, the products must come from because did get comments that uh, they sell sometimes oranges and those are not within even 200 miles of here so uh, we did we did take that out and um, let's see. yeah we put, we took out the site plan requirements and just relegated that to the outdoor event um, application and um, and we just made the signage um, just to read that basically it's only permitted on reader boards and take out any other type of signage verbiage And that's that is that's pretty much it. Vivian, I do have one one um, question. Farmers markets are typically a recurring thing, yes. and as you've noted, once a 
week or once a month or whatever we decide. Um, this is an annual permit? It would be such as the calendar of events that is um, currently uh, processed under the outdoor event application. So it would be one permit. They would get, they would get one permit for the location. Okay. And so, the, in other words, under the under on page two, middle of the page, uh, paragraph A, permit requirements uh, number three would be that should be one number and two. one and two. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, all applications must be submitted and approved a minimum of one month preceding the proposed opening day of the market. That's consistent with the outdoor event. Yes, ordinance. it is. Yeah. Okay. And, and that was the one thing I was going to <coughs> point out to you that um, I think I would like to. Um, just add through the outdoor event permitting process in that, that sentence. Okay. In both both the 30A and the 98 parts of the ordinance. I, I do have, sorry, I'm getting through it, so I'm coming up with more questions. Um, the, and uh, <coughs> B, no, wait, where am I, P? Under B2 location. Um, oh, okay, that should be B1. And I'm sorry, I made some changes today and it whacked out. <laughs> I think your, your numbering probably throughout might need changing, but that's fine. I'm worried about content. <laughs> um, in order, let's see, it says this is where it says that they must be in commercial centers of approved developments um, that contain event or common areas and are located at least 150 feet from the FDOT right of way. <laughs> so is that saying? The location of the market has to be 150 feet from? At, at least. At least 150 feet from the DOT right away. Yes. Okay. That's, that was actually what Mac and I were finishing working on this afternoon. So. And or are located. Okay. Yes. So when you say and or, does that or? I'm just trying to get exactly uh, that's what that's what Mac and I were going over today yeah. and I was like do we need the or or do we need the and <laughs> so um, because the strike the or strike the or right because you want well the, I think Mac was saying that there might be some that have an event um, location that might possibly be 100 within 150 oh, feet okay. or a common area and it might not be now, but it might be a future development. So that's where we were going back and forth today on. Oh, so you just want them located in the common area, not the common area and 150 feet away from the right of way? I think, I think well, it's either it's 150 feet or. Or, so in other words, we should strike the end and it should be or. Well, but the, um, we, we do have a concern that if it, or I had a concern that um, if it uh, was just or, um, that that would mean that they, if they do have common area closer than 150 feet, they would be allowed to set up in common area. But it'd be more visible. At or that do you point. reverse the two right. requirements? So, I mean, maybe yeah, so um, I mean, like council, I am looking for yeah. the best well, I, I guess situation. What, what are we trying to yeah, do? Yeah, what's the goal? I think is the, the goal is, is to keep it off the road. Off the road. Yeah. So I, I'm going to pose a question. If it's 100, if it's if it's in a common area, it can be closer than 150 feet minimum. Well, that's where I was going with Mac. Um, I, that was our neither thought. One of, neither one of us wanted to allow that. So. In the event we have an events area that's approved as part of a development order for a, a larger development, it could occur closer than 150 feet. Um, we couldn't think of one that already exists, um, but what we're trying to do is uh, prepare the code such that we could approve it without it having to come back for a deviation. Um, so what, what I'm wondering is, is grammatically, maybe what we should do is, is reverse the two pieces of the sentence. Or is that requirement even necessary because you always just want it located within the event or common area? But, you're, but they're saying that if the event or common area in the future might happen to be close up to the roadway. They want to they wanna allow it. So allow yeah. it or not allow I guess it. Not allow, allow it. not allow it. Not allow it. Okay, if it's not allow it, then leave the 150 and take off the out or because then it's, it's right. black and white. 
Mm -hmm. Well, part of, our a common area. part of our concern, we may have a development that the entire site is common area because it hasn't been subdivided. So uh -huh. adjacent to 98 could be considered common area, technically. Right, but then if you, if you say there's going to be 150 feet, then it negates the fact that somebody could mm -hmm. put within that 150 feet, even though it's common area. That's what you're trying to, to regulate, so I think. I, we need I, the I think. So yeah. I think we need located within commercial centers, event common areas, and are located at least 150 feet from the FDOT right of way. Uh, well, I mean, we, we can work with that. Yeah, we can. I mean, that way. Debate the merits of that, but I just want to make sure that the draft is saying what. Yes. Yeah. If y'all would prefer the 150 feet to be a hard rule, we can work with that. Oh, okay. I mean, one of our concerns was making sure that we protected the integrity of the quarter because these, I mean, tents are are prohibited with the exception of special events twice a year for nonprofits, uh, and this is uh, proposed to possibly be a weekly event. Uh, we could have tents out and along the right-of-way every weekend. Uh, and that seemed to us to be in conflict with the intent and purpose of the scenic quarter. Um, so okay. that's where we came up with 150 feet. This would be a, a reasonable distance. And we looked at a, a few developments and, and they would be consistent with that standard. Uh, where they might propose a, a farmer's market. They would have adequate, adequate locations that, that I think would be acceptable uh, to this board. Um, but we were just concerned that there might be one in the future where they propose an events area through a development order process that might be closer than 150 feet. But if you think the 150 feet is, is a good standard, then we can certainly work with that. Um, I mean, our concern was we're allowing something that's presently prohibited in the quarter, uh, and we didn't want to swing the door wide open. I mean, I personally totally agree with 150 feet, and it could be a hard line. E e even though they might have a common area, you want to push it back 150 feet. Well, that was our concern, yes. that we just didn't want to see tents lined up right along the right-of-way. And, and then they could always ask, come to the board for a, a de with a deviation request. So the and by itself, I think, would accomplish this. Yes, which was your get the or. Okay. So at least let's get established, right? Because if you add the or, then it means something totally different. Yeah, Mac and I were going back and forth yeah. on, on, on this. So what is the final suggestion? Just to say and instead and. of and or. Okay. Am I just grammatically off base with that or am I? No. No, I think, I think that accomplishes. We we're striking the or part. part. Correct. 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 The second, the and, we're striking the or from the and or. There's another or in the sentence, but I think we intend to. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. With that, Lee, are we, staff, do you have any further comments or clarifications? Okay. In that case, let's open it up for uh, public comment. My job is to try to keep this uh, orderly. We ask that you uh, introduce yourself, your name, and provide your address for the record. And we are all ears. Hello. I'm Stacy Brady, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Director for Grand Boulevard. I also direct the events there. Uh, our address is 600 Grand Boulevard. And what else did you need? That's your. That's it. You're clear to <laughs> no, so take off. No social security or. Okay. Nope. <laughs> um, so I wanted to thank Vivian because she's been great about uh, hearing us and adjusting the document. And several of the uh, issues we had have been removed or reworked, and we really appreciate that. Uh, we too just got this when we walked in, so we were trying to really quickly, you know, reconcile and see if. Um, you know, what issues we wanted to address. We actually, you know, after meeting with Vivian, our recommendation was that almost everything we're talking about is covered within the current event permitting uh, process. Um, signage, you know, um, I mean, all of the details that were in here, I think that's probably why they took some of the things out because it seemed very redundant to us. What we had recommended was use the ORC event permit processing uh, as is, it's extensive, and add, add addendums for the couple of things that seem to be not covered by it. So that was our recommendation collect collectively. 
So they came back with this revision. And um, I'm just going to address two issues, and I think my colleagues are probably going to uh, address a couple of others. So on the issue on page three of frequency, um, you know, when we started Grand Boulevard's Farmer's Market three years ago, we actually started it on Wednesday and Saturday. And we held it on Wednesday and Saturday for maybe three months. And as soon as the visitors left, um, you know, the market didn't bear out a second one. So, you know, obviously, if people aren't going to come to it, and then vendors aren't going to come to it, and then you're not going to have a farmer's market. So it worked out exactly how it's supposed to. You know, the market didn't bear it out, so we've just got one. That being said, um, you know, I, I I'm a little bit concerned about limiting it to one because, say, for example, what if you had some big special thing and you wanted to add an extra one for one day for whatever reason? I don't know what it is, but that is just seems uh, very limiting to me. So I wanted to make that note. Secondly, with regard to the signage, um, I'm confused, and, and I'm sure Vivian can, can straighten me out here. Um, on the signage that is uh, allowed only on approved reader boards on the main monument sign, which, by the way, we're in compliance with, okay? So within the event permitting packet, there's a document that is Walton County application for event signage. And in this document, part four reads, all signage may be placed in the county right of way two days before the activity and must be removed two days after the activity. The signage can be no larger than 18 inches by 24 inches and must be placed with wire stakes. Signage must be professionally printed, painted, or constructed. No hand-lettered cardboard paper will be permitted. No more than two signs temporarily displayed in right-of-way for each roadway request above will be allowed. So um, I actually had never seen this before, so this must be fairly new. Okay. Um, uh, I haven't actually permitted these events, but I did look through this, um, and I, I thought that, that was for in the events that have roadway um, activity. That Where you have to close roads? Yes. That's, that's what I read. I would like to get that back in here for... Yeah, because it doesn't... Um, it doesn't say that. That's what... Um, there's, there's, sorry, there are, there are stipulations for road closure right. signs that have just been updated. Yep. So I know that, oh, okay. that's changed recently, but I don't think that that form is for that. That's here. So I'm just, um, I feel like we're saying two different things here because we're saying uh, for a farmer's market, which you have to get an event permit for, so if you're getting an event permit for it, then... You know, it seems like that what you've got in the event permitting package would follow, and then you're going to have an ordinance that's going to say something different. So I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm just uh, saying that seems like that needs to be addressed. I guess just to clarify that. So the outdoor event ordinance applies countywide, mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. um, and the scenic corridor standards are more specific. So whenever you have an event on the scenic corridor, those specific provisions would apply in addition. So to the, the so the um, ordinance would supersede what the county yeah. has in their packet. Yes. So the guidelines, scenic specific. corridor guidelines, um, overrules what the county has in their packet. Where they're more specific. Okay, because yeah. that's what I was asking. I was trying to get clar clarity on that. And those were the two issues that I wanted to bring up. Any questions for me? Anybody? No, thank you very much. Uh, well, Go ahead, I, Lee. Maybe you can speak to Ms. Stacy or the other folks that are here. Um, as far as frequency, could you ever see a need to have more than two a week of these? Well, I mean, personally, no. But, you know, I hate to limit somebody else. And again, Lee, it's whatever the market will bear. I mean, nobody's going to, they're not going to have a farmer's market, you know, if nobody goes to it, if the need or desire or interest isn't there. It's not going to happen. Totally understand market factors. We're, I think this is just so different because, right. um, you know, we're talking about something that pretty much if you have three or four, end up with three or four or five locations along this corridor sure. and all three or four or five are doing it twice a week, right. suddenly we have 
this presence out there that we haven't before, and it's bringing elements in that we don't allow other people to do. So then you start going down that slippery slope of, you know. Um, well, you could have you could have as many farmers markets in. a week as you if as you wanted if you meet the permanent requirements of the quarter. Yeah, because conversely, you could have In other say words, there are five total, and they're all on Saturday morning. So you know, they're the everybody set up on the one day. So I don't really know how that would be different. I'm well, not sure the yeah, just, I'm not sure the market, the local market, would support that. I think there's a good right. reason why the markets move they're, around. They're on but, alternating days. Yeah. It's just a quantity of sure something out there that is I now think more than one would be allowed. more than one would at least give some flexibility. Okay. Thank you, and I'm going to try to move things thank along. You, and let, th thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, any other folks want to speak? I just wanted to add that this does say uh, Walton County application for events signing agenda is for on the roadways, uh, Mingle County right away. Um, so for any sort of event? Okay. Meaning the event. An event in the county right away or a sign that's in the county? Signage. In okay. The county right away. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Diane. Hey, how are you? Good. I am Diane Cole of Hannes, and I'm the owner of the 30A Farmers Markets in South Walton County. So I do the Farmers Market at Rosemary, Grand Boulevard. We just opened 30 Avenue, and Seascape Resort just contracted with me as well. I also have one in Okaloosa County in Niceville. Um, I started the farmers markets four years ago. I feel like we've got a great thing going with them. We keep a high standard of quality of vendors and products that are at the farmers market. Um, when we got our application to do 30 Avenue, we did run into a couple of hiccups. And one of the hiccups we found on the day we were going to get permitted was that tents needed to be 400 feet off of the right of way. My suggestion after walking the properties at 30 Avenue and also at Seascape Resort, the 25 foot county right of way, I would suggest then an additional 50 feet. The 150 plus the 25 of 175 is gonna cause and pose problems, especially with 30 Avenue. 30 Avenue is shaped like a pie. And the further you go back, you have less common space or outdoor event type planning space. So the first fountain that is at 30 Avenue, the big one up front, that right there is probably about 75 to 80 feet. We are directly across the street from that, so we're probably about, I'm gonna say 90. Going to the 175 feet is gonna cause the problem that it did before. We are gonna be pushed behind buildings and hardly have any visibility from 98. So that's my recommendation there. Second recommendation that we have a problem with is with any farmer's market. I don't care if you're on the scenic quarter, you're on 98 out of sight, out of mind. People don't know you're there, they're not gonna come. The second thing is the signage. So for example, the signs that you, right now that you would allow the signage to be on, 30th Avenue doesn't want their beautiful marquee to have any additional signage on it. So I would request, if possible, just during the hours of the farmer's market from say seven in the morning, 7.30 till one o'clock in the afternoon, to be able to put a sign out, whether it's one or two, I'd like to put one at the stoplight there at 30A and 98, and then the one at the main entrance to 30 Avenue, so customers do know that we are there. We are a community service. It is very difficult to get these off the ground. We're not struggling yet at 30 Avenue, but I can see now with summer being over and cars driving by and not people knowing that we're there, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult in the off season. So that's my other recommendation that I have. Um, other than that, I think I'm happy with everything else. I would like to request a minimum of two days a week. We do that at Rosemary this year due to construction. That is actually why we are across the street at 30 Avenue. Same thing with Grand Boulevard, um, Seascape Resort. Uh, you know, I really think that we'll probably only do one at Seascape Resort, but I would leave that up to the management with Seascape Resort to see what they would like us to do and bring in to generate traffic into their particular new outdoor shopping area. Same thing there, we have issues with our setbacks at Seascape. If we go 175 feet, we are in the middle of their huge parking lot. Going behind, I had suggested to Vivian before, we might use the boardwalk behind that. That is not gonna work. That boardwalk is not ample, big enough or ample in size to hold a farmer's market. 
So I thank you for your time, and you know what? I don't think I gave you my address. My address is 1676 J.D. Miller Road, Santa Rosa Beach, 32459. Thank you. So, so Diane, where yes. would you set up at Seascape? At Seascape, they actually have been calling me. They would like to do it up in the front parking lot. So um, it would be over, part of the parking lot? Yeah, up in the front. So we went and we walked that off as well. I think we're pl probably close to 90 feet off the right-of-way. But when you pull in to the new location at Seascape, if you kind of went right to your right, there's an area there that they would like us to set up. Um, they want us as close to 98 as we can possibly get, so we're not obstructing and taking up a lot of the parking spaces that are there for the tenants. And again, the boardwalk in the back is where we would love to have gone originally. It's just not going to work. Are we, what, what county right away are we talking about? From my understanding, in 98, there's a 25 foot. It's all What is a 25? Yeah. yeah. Why do you add 25 to 150? Yeah. yeah. But if no. Right. Yes, which is 25 feet. What is it? It's the property. Okay. All right. So this side's the right way. This that's side's still the too far. Way. We're not going to have. It's not going to work. So it's 150, not 175. So okay. So hold on. So DOT's right away is how wide? Well, it varies, it's, but it's about not, 200 feet. And they can't. Depends on which side of the highway you're on. Yeah, you're on it, the, ver it varies. South side, it's not as wide as the north side. What's the narrowest? What's yeah. the narrowest that it yeah. is? Do we know? That's a good question. I don't know what the narrowest would be. I thought it was 25 down at 30 Avenue. I thought we had a meeting, and I thought that's what I was There's told. There's a 25 foot landscape. Uh, that's what you're talking about. But that's not, that's, that's included in that 150 feet. Yeah. That, that number that we have in there, in there now. It's also yeah. included in the DOT right away, right? Or does it start from the, right from the DOT right away? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the issue is, is that the, the, what, what everyone's trying to say here is, is that Highway 98 is not centered in the right of way. That's right. In several locations. But I think when they do the highway widening project, it will take up the entire right of way. So there will be a sidewalk, at, specifically at Seascape, there will be a sidewalk on the, on the north and south sides of the road and they will extend right up to the edge of the right of way. Yeah, so but and, and, and with the, the staff is... The 25-foot buffer zone and then, and then the... So yeah, the 25-foot buffer zone is within the property. Yeah, it's measured from the property. So yeah, so it has no my, bearing, so it has no bearing is, on yeah, this measurement. Does, you don't yeah, that doesn't yeah. have a bearing. There is a specific point that exists today, regardless of the road widening, regardless of the 25-foot buffer zone, that the 150 feet that's contemplated in our current working draft mm -hmm. will be measured from. So none of that stuff affects it. It's the same. There's, there's no doubt about where the 150 feet is measured from. But, but my question is, you keep saying 75 feet. From Me? Whatever that line well, now starts. I'm kind of confused because you guys and, are throwing all the uh, different too. numbers. I just got 150 feet. Right. And you brought up two specific examples that, that adversely impact your markets. One right. at 30A and one potentially at Seascape. Seascape. And I think. So am I correct there? Did I? I'm no, you're, no, you're saying. correct. So I'm kind of confused now because I kind of had an idea of how far we had to be. Uh, when I walked it off the other day, and I'm just going to go in layman terms. When I went up to 98 and I walked it off to that first fountain, we were right at about 80 feet at the first fountain. So, so I, yeah, Diane, did we're you walk off the curb of 98? I did do that because I wanted to see okay. how far. That's what we're. Okay. Yeah, that's the challenge. Yeah. Is and, and this is a very common misunderstanding that folks have. The the pavement and mm -hmm. the curbs and sidewalks. Mm -hmm frequently have nothing to do with the right of way. Okay. Um, as we've talked about, in so 98 is pushed to one best, side in some cases. Your best indication is uh, power, power lines. Power yeah. Utilities. Ooh, yeah. So that's even further back then, correct? Yes. The, 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 the See, northern, I can't use that. The, the joint between the property line and the northern edge of the right of way, which is mm -hmm. the same thing, it's a coincidence, um, is probably some not insignificant distance into the lawn of 30 Avenue. Yes, yeah, so I know where those power lines are. So then I'm, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, that's even going to push us even further yes, back. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so again, yeah. that's our same problem. We're going to be back at that point when whoever came out, the DOT came out and measured 400 feet from me. And if you are familiar with 30 Avenue at all, that took us to the very back behind the buildings where Ohana Institute is building their new school. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. We're so, not 
if, so if I if that. I can just and in, in, in I can tell you this this group of folks sitting up here we've worked very hard and we'll stay late into the evening or continue this to the next meeting if it's most appropriate to try to make sure that we get the right blend of things but I, if i can just try to boil down mm -hmm. our challenge so that y'all will understand where we're coming from okay yeah. um the scenic corridor as um uh, madam attorney mentioned a second ago is has a higher standard than most of walton county and so the challenge here very much is that the out the outdoor activities ordinance probably as y'all have perceived is a fantastic way rather than have a complex farmer's market ordinance let's just roll it under that we I, I agree with that i'm suspecting that probably the rest of the um, board agrees with that however when you get inside the scenic corridor which is essentially are regulations that affect things you can see from highway 98 and this happens to have a little component with 30a but i'll just focus on the 98 scenic corridor for many years now, um, the uh, county has successfully regulated that area, and it is the reason that as soon as you cross the county line, things look better. They don't look like Destin, and they don't look like Panama City Beach. You all may or may not care about this kind of stuff, but that's what, that's what this board exists to make sure that the, the lighting, the signage, the landscaping is all at a much higher standard. We believe, and this has come up at enough other meetings that I'm confident speaking for the, for the board, that that increases the value of property in those areas. It attracts more and customers that will spend more money um, to the businesses in those areas. And that occasionally we've had the unpleasant frustration of saying to someone who says, I want to have a bigger sign, I want to have more lighting, I want to cut down all the trees, We've ultimately told them, well, if you want to do that, there's two counties on either side of us that you're welcome to go to and do exactly that. But our job is to protect the scenic corridor. So we have no, I mean, two of us sitting up here, or, or I'm actually going to ask in a second whether I have to recuse myself. I hope not. But of course, we have a farmer's market. Diane is one of our customers, right. but it's a, right. you know, arm's length type transaction deal. Uh, and leaves. This is a, a legislative item that would have a broad impact. So, so we don't have a, an issue with that. I don't think okay. that this would be a special gain or loss. So for those of you in the audience that don't know me, Diane does a farmer's market in Rosemary Beach um, uh, for my organization, the Rosemary Beach Property Owners Association. Lee is probably evident. Um, uh, she's part of the um, Howard Group that I'm guessing is involved in some way, shape, or form with, with one of the other far farmer's markets. So um, we don't have anything against farmer's markets. What we have a problem with, and what I agree with many of the things the staff said, we do have a problem with things that can sneak under the design, the, the uh, scenic corridor regulations and take us the wrong direction and, and damage that. And having lots of tents in the right of way is a challenge. It's not the fact that there are farmers market, there's farmers market vendors under those tents, it's the tents, it's the signs. And so we wanna, str we wanna struggle to work with you to get the right thing, but understand that we've got to, our obligation is to defend the, the success and the effective regulations that have made the scenic corridor in Walton County what it is. So does that maybe help? And I, I, I'm starting to sense that we probably are not going to get this done properly this evening. I think we should keep working on it. Um, but I, I think that, that we may need to have one more go at this at this ordinance i mean I'm, I'm speaking for myself now so maybe if we can try to get on the table a few of the things that we feel are important and let the staff have another yeah I, I, i'd of. like to i'd like to see specifically where exactly you know the um you know the location of, of you know where the fdot right-of-way starts and ends and, and and where that 150 foot gets measured so that we're really clear on it because yeah, 98 yeah. it has a ver you know varies you don't really know how far that 150 yeah. is giving you and, and i even think i mean just an example and i'm introducing this maybe a new a new concept but i think that it's possible to set up a farmer's market with a consistent type of tent in a nice manner where the actual the whole effect is is a very nice thing i mean you, you know yeah, you might designer yeah. designer farmer's market yeah I, yeah <laughs> and, but so the point with that would be is if one person's got a blue tent the next person's got a red tent and it's a little taller and you know it's this kind of big messy thing going on that ends up looking more like a flea market than an organized farmer's market you know that's the kind of stuff we're struggling with so 
you know, I don't know if there's some additional things we can layer in here that aren't onerous. Farmers markets aren't, you know, y'all don't start with a great big giant profit margin to go out and buy fancy new tents and everything. I understand that. So, um, but just to just trust that it's not anything we've got against farmers markets. Sure. It's, it's, it's the fact that lots of other people have spent a lot of money making everything pretty and we want to keep it that way. Right. So, and I, I, I would feel. The important thing, Diane, is folks like yourself, mm -hmm. we would like to see it be a win-win, a win for yeah. Walton County, a win for the vendors, a win for the people that manage the vendors. Right. The patrons. And a, right. and, a, and, a, and a win for the resorts or, or uh, commercial interests that, you know, facilitate that. But we, we don't want to be a roadblock to it. Sure. So if, it, if the magic number is 150 or it's 75, somebody kind of needs to put a box on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with what um, Lourdes had mentioned, too, because I'm unfamiliar with some of the county, like the right-of-ways and the setbacks, and how far is this going to push us back, because <coughs> on this map that you just got, 400 feet is way in the back of the property, and where we are right now, which we got permitted to do because of how the parcel didn't butt up, we are right we're here. about 150 feet. Not yeah, 400 yeah, feet off the table. Yeah, okay, per, right. That's the definition of the scenic. Yeah, corridor. that's in the that was in the back by Ohana. No, no. Um, yeah. yeah, we're right. And Diane, I think you're, you're on the table. just. I'm mean, using the the um, the parking bay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. A typical parking bay. The first parking space is uh, 20 it's feet. The feet. it's yeah, it's 64 feet. So mm -hmm. it's uh, 20 foot parking bay, 24 foot drive lanes, 20 foot parking bay, and it looks like it's about half that distance. Maybe maybe actually maybe twice that distance. So the the tip of the lawn right here from the right of way looks like it's approaching 110 feet maybe. Can I come closer, David? I can't see. Okay, feet. sorry, that's why. I'm... Where is okay. that right of way? What are you the, talking the right about? The right of way, if, if this, which appears to be the right of way here, so you can see it's well into the lawn. Yes. So if this is 64 feet, uh -huh. you can see as this curve comes around, it's not quite twice the distance. To here, right. And that first point so if I had to make an educated guess, I'd say the distance from the edge of the right of way to the front of this lawn, closest to the right of way, is just over a hundred feet. But it's probably not 125 feet. Yeah, because we're right here right now. And your goal is to use that whole lawn, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, because we're really it's chopped up. It's really weird right now on how we have it. It's just. We're in this back area right here, y'all. There's really nowhere to even put tents. They have to be super, super small. Like a little cart. So. Yeah. Well, the other thing, I mean, how's it going to look? Well, and, and the other thing, too, is that in, in these situations, and we've found this with deviation requests, is that many times we have discovered, after struggling through some a lot of deviation requests, that we are put in a position where we are trying to ch in, in effect, change the guidelines for an applicant based on design of their property. And that puts us in a very difficult position. Um, and so we just have to be careful about that. Um, but and so, sometimes the best thing to do is, is to make a regulation that applies to the typical situation. And then That's when there's a situation that comes up, we, uh, we look at it and, and have the authority to grant a deviation. That's so, exactly right. where I'm going. Think, yeah, yeah. I think. Because it's, 30 yeah. Avenue is probably one of those that, you know, if it needs to have a deviation, that can be approved. And if it's 25 feet and if it's we look done, at it's it. Done, yeah. it's done, yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm just going. Just 100 feet. And I don't want to set the overall limit based on 30 Avenue. Right. right. Well, it's going to be the same for Seascape. And, you know, and if anybody else wants to come down the road, too, and do anything, then you're going to run into that same problem. Grand Boulevard, it really doesn't apply. We're over 300 feet from 98. But one thing, and I will um, uh, sit back down, is you had mentioned about changing colors of tents. Um, being a market manager and owner, the one thing that I will say, most of the vendors that are out there are working week to week. These are people that don't have a lot of disposable income, so requiring them to go out and purchase a tent, and a good tent runs $200 plus, is really a financial burden and a struggle on them. Same thing for their signage and their banners, if anything has to be done with that. So and, I just and, wanted to let you know that. And that's acknowledged, Diane, but again, at, at a certain point, we are doing a disservice to the property owners that have invested a tremendous amount of money to meet the higher standards. Right. And again, while most of them, I'm confident, have no problem with farmers markets, right. it, to say, okay, we're going to have uh, uh, something that is so clearly against the grain of everything we've worked so hard on, 
to generate, I mean, and, 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 I, and I think this is, I believe this is a true statement, that the, the reason that farmers markets, um, uh, to a certain extent, can thrive in Walton County in all these different locations and people will go to them is because of the type of folks that are coming down here because mm -hmm. we have things like a scenic corridor. Right. And so it's feeding on itself. So it's not an easy problem to deal with, but I think we, and that's why I'm, that's the, exactly the reason I've said this may take more than one meeting. Sure. We sincerely want to generate so. reasonable guidelines. Right. But trust that the reason we're struggling with this is, is nothing to do with having a beef with farmers markets. It's right. having to do with the scenic corridor. Right. So. Okay. Is that it? Um, sure. Okay. Thank right. you. Here, here's a question I have from staff for staff or us. Um, is and this I'm maybe showing my ignorance a little bit here, so I'll say that up front. But if the if the width of the right of way varies, then I'm wondering if the edge of the right of way is the right starting point. Starting yeah. point. Maybe that's it's from the what, cartway. That's what I'm yeah. starting to Could wonder. It be the mid midpoint. Midpoint of the, of the right of way. Well, um, I mean, yeah, it does it say the from the FDOT, 400 feet from the FDOT right of way. So. That but for these be, purposes, I'm wondering if it's from the curb. I mean, yeah, whatever that distance is, and, and that way, because another thing that can change is the road can widen. Mm -hmm. um, so that can change your curb, not your right of way. Yeah. So I get. And these are temporary. These are temporary um, structures, in essence. We're talking yes. about the reason you have to use the right of way for buildings and things like that is because exactly that reason. The road can move around, and but the so. pro the proximity to 98 is the issue. So if the right of way varies in width, then I'm wondering yeah. if that's oh, the right story you're point. saying. Just you see just, what I mean? Just yeah. in this case, it looks like you'd get an additional 30 foot. You'd get again, just looking at what I can tell, it looks like the, yeah, there's no, 20 or 30 feet of lawn. Or the edge of the edge of the property. Feet. Yeah, the prop property the, there's, line. Yeah, 30 Avenue. The the curb for nine for most of 98, not including the turn lanes. The curb for the travel lane, the northernmost travel lane on 98, looks like it's at least. It would probably it's be probably the better part of 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah, 150. You would have 150 feet. So that would. I want to make so that, sure it's fair to every farmer's market. Yeah. If you have it from the edge of the road, um, it, certainly it can move um, if the road moves. Uh, but this, these are temporary structures so that they can move easily. Yeah, absolutely. Move. Yeah. And if you have it from the edge of the road, it also, I think it would make um, enforcement easier because the code enforcement goes down. They don't have to figure out where the edge of the right of way is, yeah. and they don't have to figure out where, you know, different things are at the road is where it is. And that way, a location's not punished if they happen to have a very wide right of way. Yeah. DOT right of way. I would suggest from an enforcement standpoint, every other thing that we enforce is enforced from the property line, which is also the boundary of or where we measure the scenic quarter from. And I'd recommend we use the property line, which is also the right-of-way line. This right-of-way is essentially a couple hundred feet wide, and that's fairly uniform throughout Walton County. Um, it will ultimately go to 220 feet if DOT gets their way when they six lane all the way to Bay County. Um, but I would strongly recommend that we measure from the greater extent of the right of way. Um, oh, Lordy. That's where we, at Code that. Enforcement, is familiar with measuring from property lines. Um, I'm not laughing at you, Mac. It's the six laning all the way to Bay County that causes it. I know. It. <laughs> that's coming. Uh, it shouldn't. Yeah, based it probably, on my it probably little is. inexpensive paper scale that I created here, um, uh, for what it's worth, not uh, Max comment notwithstanding, um, it appears that it is just over 150 feet from the northernmost curb of the travel lane of 98 to the southern end of the lawn that the 30 Avenue market sets up on. So if we were to follow Ms. Moore's suggestion and keep the 150 feet, that one would be compliant. I'm pretty confident. If you changed it to use the edge of the road as yes. the starting and I, point. And I don't mean to immediately after Max comment act as if I ignored it. I didn't. But uh, No, I think it needs thought. to be thought yeah. through. I'm throwing <laughs> right. it out there as something to think through. Yeah. And I, I, I support the logic of your comment because these are temporary structures. I would right. never support right. that right. for a permanent structure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you have one thing to add that um, when... Diane did say that they were looking at Seascape to have it in the parking lot. The definition of the location requirement yeah. 
it would not meet that under this mm -hmm. um, scenario, this draft. So, because um, it would not be part of the common area or approved vent area. Um, as a as a question, I, I also agree strongly with the staff's concern that when we start getting more than once a week, the concern for the impact on the scenic corridor and the ways I've talked about and that they've, the staff has talked about, I think becomes more significant. That's what I said um, earlier. And, and I don't know if we create a different standard for markets that occur more often. I mean, I think you can make the argument that the more often the market's occurring, the less that the impact of having to have a more consistent tent size and color and that type of stuff. Um, you know, if, if uh, uh, venues that wanted to host farmers markets ended up, in, in order to have them, had to end up buying tents or offsetting the cost of, of that type of stuff. I mean, this, these venues are certainly spending, I can tell you, the, the amount of money that 30th Avenue spent on trees is, yeah. is, they probably spent more on one tree than the, it would cost to have all the tents for the, all, the entire farmers market. So, you know, I, I think that I just, it's it's a really hard pill for me to swallow to start rolling back things incrementally. You know, the next, there's there's, um, some of the paperwork I just signed and there's another request before us to allow signs um, to be substantially larger um, than the code requires and that's this this board every month we hear more requests to relax the rules relax the rules relax the rules and there's going to be a point at which mm -hmm. the the value of these regulations is just going to disappear and um, I'm starting to ramble so I'll Anyone else want to say anything? I agree with that very much. It is a tremendously tenuous balancing act. To try yes, sir. To figure out where that goes. Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Boyle on behalf of Seaside for my company, Portrum Creative. Uh, my address is 25 Central Square, uh, San Rosa Beach. Uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of uh, Seaside and Portrum and Creative to just thank, thanks to Vivian for taking the time and to the board for taking the time to consider this. Uh, from an event producing standpoint, we produce events all up and around the region and on the West Coast. And uh, you know, the amount of effort that we're putting into this, we, you know, we appreciate both the notes and making sure that these markets are operating on a level that uh, reflect the value of the, the real estate and of the developments that are going on. Um, I think that, uh, getting the feedback from the market producers, from the event producers uh, is key because we are very much invested in how these events are the same way that uh, these business owners and these development owners, we're, we're representing uh, some of the more powerful people in this county uh, who are uh, being very generous with their spacing and allowing these events to happen uh, free to the public. And so we wanna make sure that these events are happening, you know, on a level that, uh, you know, matches the quality of um, the design standards in the scenic corridor. The one point that I would make that uh, even though scenic 30A is obviously not uh, following under the, the same amount of uh, rules, uh, the multiple markets per week, uh, I think based on distance of this county, uh, I think you would take that into effect that there are Saturday markets that occur at the same time, you know, at mm -hmm. the same time and that the market does allow for that. Uh, there's a high demand for market vendors in this area and Diane can speak to that. Um, and then the idea of having more than one a week, I think there should be an exemption for holiday markets because we do do that uh, during Christmas and Thanksgiving. So with that, again, thank you to Vivian and to the board. Um, thank you, yep. Kevin. Uh, staff, if we take um, another meeting cycle to try to arrive at an effective solution, what are we operating under right now? In other words, are the, are the markets in violation and we've got a, they're not going to be allowed to operate until we come up with something or can we? Well, we have been allowing these to operate through the Outdoor Event Committee, I believe. Um, um, but we've got other requests that to expand this. So, okay. I mean, it's now since they're, they're temporary events, as soon as the new ordinance takes, takes force, it's, there's no grandfathering. Right. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for is advice 
can can we can we take another meeting can we take another meeting and make sure that the, and i think it'd be fantastic if the staff would sit down um with the feedback that you all, you all have hopefully registered um from us and i hope that comes across that we support many of the things that have been suggested um but i think we all acknowledge that the you know we've got to work on this a little more to to, to give the farmers markets a fighting chance of you know continuing and expanding because they are a great thing for the community so um anybody else have any comments i just want to ask the question of the folks that are here from the industry have you expressed all of your concerns about what you see in this version three i guess is that what we're calling it okay yeah i think so i think it's just the, the setbacks yeah i mean i think, I think this i mean we, we spoke about uh, ordinances from other markets and them being more complicated i think those markets have been around longer i think uh, those things have built up over time i think once you start addressing things like the cottage food law you start addressing uh the um the credibility of market vendors is when you get into a whole other world so i think simplifying it to the way that it's been simplified speaks to the idea of being able to grow it as we move forward so as new things come up with farmers markets we'll be able to with our feedback and our expertise we'll be able to give you that guidance to say this is how um, we feel that we can continue to make sure that these markets operate under a, um, you know, a good standard Thank you. Okay. Well, with that said, uh, any other comments from the public? Okay. Uh, I think we've reached the point at which continuing this item is probably appropriate. I move that we continue the item until our next meeting. Second. Right. Okay. Probably moved and seconded. Any further comments from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Can Thank we you get, all. Can we get some clarification on exactly what you'd like to see at the next meeting? I mean, some graphics with distances identified or? Um, That's a good question. How can I, we help you? Well, I, I'm glad it didn't come to this, but um, I, I have, I'm speaking for myself, I have enough concern that that not regulating the appearance of the tents and the signage with a reduced distance off of the right of way or the curb or whatever we come up with is is not going to be satisfactory i think that that the, the distance is not the only issue um and so i would love to see the staff consider the and i know you all are aware of this the importance of the of the of the scenic corridor standards is is more than just the same old stuff further away from the road somehow somehow i believe we've got to to um regulate a a, a minimum level of of aesthetic um impact in terms of the of the the, the, tents. the tents and everything and i don't know if it's numbers or arrangement or i mean you all mentioned a, a, a site plan that was pulled out in this in this most recent one i think that probably should go back in okay um so uh, anybody else yeah i think it should you know we, sh we should regulate the colors i mean we regulate yeah. colors on all the all the buildings themselves uh you know there's got to be something that makes it you know compatible and appealing so that it, it becomes something special and like you said it's it's much more um, in keeping with with the level of aesthetics that the, the same development has yeah and um, you know if, if, if the vendors that wanna the, wanna come to that area they you know they also put put some uh, effort into what their tents look like. And you know maybe the vendors that can't afford it go to some other areas. You know it just it's you know the um, it's economics to a certain extent. My only concern with that is the with the color is it, I think it truly is um, based on who the the vendors are uh, really a burden for them to have to buy that. So you'd have to look at not having the vendors buy the tents but having the location right i mean maybe tents. maybe yeah, it's, if you're it's gonna that, have it be uniform well maybe yeah. that's that's the case i mean yeah. but something's gotta it's gotta it, it, it can't just look like every every where else you know and it, it may be because some it just you know yeah it may, it may not and this i know may going to serve to make the, the the standards a little more complicated but maybe it is a function of 
things within a certain distance have a higher standard. Um, so if we're not saying that you can't at 30th Avenue um, uh, have, have something in that closer to the 98 right of way than, than the 150 feet. However, if it is within that dimension, then the standards that the tents all need to be generally the same color. And it's not like we're going to look at one and go, well, that's a different color white than this one. I don't, I don't think we're talking about that. It's, no, it's, it's just that it, it, it has to have, yeah. it has to have some kind of for example quality. Diane, since you're you know. still here, the um, the scenic corridor standards have some comments that the colors on buildings for awnings and railings shall not be designed to draw attention to them. Um, so you know, someone putting a bright purple canopy on the front of a building to say, "Hey, look at me," and draw more attention to it—that's not acceptable in the scenic corridor. And so we need to have some standards like that. And, and you know, you and I have had conversations. The vast majority of the vendors, the signage is discreet. The tents are set up in a manner that's great. But every so often, someone will put out a sign that's that's a "Hey, look at me" sign. That's the type of thing I think we need to regulate. That's the type of thing that does harm to the scenic corridor. Well, the majority of the tents are white. Yeah. Um, and, and keep in mind, we're also not just talking about your farmer's market. Um, yep. uh, we're, we're talking about farmer's markets that may be around the corner uh, that, that aren't here yet. And so, yeah. I mean, if they're white, that's fine. I mean, I have no problem. I just, you know, it, it's like when it, it, I mean, I just think that it, it, it's the look that, you know, you want it to be special or a little bit more, you know, thought out and thought out. Mac, is that I think we, a little, did I put a little dent in the request there? No, I think we've got an idea of what you're looking for. Okay. Thank and I, you. I think, can I just mention too, the holiday market was a good point. If y'all can think about right. some kind of allowance for holidays, yeah, extra yeah. holiday. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, guys. Yep. All right, Thanks. Next thank you. All. Do we have oh. a uh, motion to continue? Yes, we did, and it uh, passed unanimously. Okay. Yeah. Can we take a five minute rest? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the call needs to sign. She was the acting chair. We're just waiting on calls. Yes. Oh, that's been there. That's uh, that's a different one. Um, no, I think that I think it may be a completely different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Sydney. Sorry. <laughs> that's a different business, I believe. No, I know. Yeah. I know, but it. You know. Oh no, I mean, I mean, it's not. It's not even a. It's a uh, ice house. I don't think I saw that. I saw their sign. Yeah. Is it well, a nice house or not nice house? We can discuss it. Okay. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Colleen's right here. how long the meeting's gone on. I'm at 73% now. <laughs> and I flagged it in after the meeting started. Much better than I was a few months ago.
you doing, Dory? Okay, uh, we are ending recess and jumping back into it. With the next item up on the agenda um, is the Acme Oyster House sign deviation. Mr. Chair, before we continue, Lee Moore has an announcement for the Oh, board. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're so funny. I, I just want to let you guys know, you probably know I'm on the board of the Scenic Corridor Foundation, and our organization has started a process where we're going to present a Design Excellence Award every quarter to a project business slash developer that has really exemplified what the corridor standards are in place to accomplish. And so we had our inaugural Design Excellence Award presentation this morning, and we gave it to the Tom Thumb in Miramar Beach that redid their facade, their pumps, and their landscaping, which made a tremendous difference in the aesthetics of that location. Um, we've already heard people saying, you know, I used to never go there, and now I stop there and get gas. And it's um, they did a fabulous job, and they didn't have to. So. <laughs> Um, I mean, they didn't have to renovate that thing. So we'll be doing that every quarter and selecting, our board will select projects to recognize. We're going to do some retroactive existing projects, and then in the future we'll do ones that come along. So hopefully that'll be great to set examples and give people a pat on the back and thank you for doing great. it. Great. Yeah, it, totally night and day. On yeah, absolutely. Project. No, I agree. Yeah. They didn't know that going in that if you renovate your building then you have to bring the whole site up to code because yeah. there was like not a stitch of landscaping on that property yeah. but when they renovated they had to bring the parking up to code which it was not and they had to bring the landscaping up to code and it's a tremendous difference yeah but that one lady from the bank told me that she said i've lived here for 13 years i've never used this tom thumb now i do it really does it, it really is good for the business. Yeah. Great. Really well, and there's nothing we can do about it, but we struggle with that when you, when you see you've got all these nice trees out there, and there's plenty of studies out there that show trees create value, yep. and they just clear from property line to property line. They put in, like, well, I probably shouldn't say what, the, <laughs> these little wimpy trees, you know, that, <laughs> that barely live. Yep. Okay, well, thank you for that uh, announcement. And with that, Tim? Yes, thank you. Tim Brown, Planning and Development, good evening. Uh, for the two board members that were not here last month, we'll, I'll start from the beginning. This is a scenic quarter deviation request to allow for three canopy signs on the north side of the building, two canopy signs, and a building sign on the south side of the building a deviation for sign height from 36 inches to 72 inches for a building sign on the east side and a deviation for sign height from 36 inches to 40 inches for a canopy sign on the north side. So last month the board denied the deviation for two canopy signs on the north which is facing 98 and two canopy signs on the south. They approved the sign, the building sign, for the rear. So that leaves for tonight the remaining deviations for allowing the canopy sign on the north side and the front, a sign deviation for that canopy sign for height from 36 inches to 40 inches, and the building sign on the east side from 36 inches to 72 inches. What they did is turned it on its side it's the exact same sign that's on the front of the building and the rear of the building, but they turned it on its side so it went from 36 inches in height, which is the max, to 72. So that's why they're asking for the deviation on the east side. And am I correct, it also faces 98? Yes, it faces 98. Versus 90. being on the eastern right. side. Right, if, if they, the if they did it flat to the building, you couldn't see it from 98. You'd only see it from Seascape Boulevard or Drive, Seascape Drive. So by putting it on its side and projecting, it's actually projecting off the building, then you can see it from Highway 98. And you can also see it from Seacrest Drive. 
So before us right now is just the blade sign? No, no, no. Oh. Those three that I outlined. Okay. There was last month we had four members, so you need four votes. So they continued those three remaining deviations to this month, where we had a where we have a full board. Okay. Well, and, and, and those, I guess before we get started, just so the applicants aware, we still don't have a full board tonight. We have five members, but the same rules apply that you need yeah, four votes Donna. to approve the deviation. Yeah. Now, did you say the canopy signs were denied? Denied. Well, some of them. We still two in the front, and they they have those are the ones that says. Uh, yeah, well, oysters, crab cakes, okay. 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 shrimp. We're going to go over the windows. So what we're doing tonight, let me make sure I understand, it's the eastern side sign mm -hmm. being flipped and facing 98, an extra sign at the end of the awning on the front of the building. Over the face, entrance, uh -huh. the canopy over the sign entrance. over the entrance. Yeah, the rounded, and, then, the yes. and then that <laughs> sign is proposed to be larger, than higher. What's, higher, higher than what's allowed. Yes. So those are the three deviations. Yes. Y'all got That's what remains. No, no action was taking, how taken. Much, how much higher is is the uh, the sign on the canopy? They're asking four, in, four, four inches. Thirty six to, to forty. Thirty six to forty. Yes. So what we discussed at the last meeting is for those that weren't here. They already have a sign on the building facade above that canopy, so you would end up with a building sign and then the canopy sign right below it, but of oh, course no. projected. I, I just don't see, <coughs> I mean, personally, I don't see well, the, and I, we can't do that. Well, I okay. guess we're not really at a place for um, board okay. comment if the applicant <coughs> wants to come forward and make their presentation, if there's no other <coughs> questions for Tim. Mm -hmm. Yes, please, let's proceed that way. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeremy W. and I serve as the Director of Business Development for Acme Oyster House. First of all, my apologies for not being here on July 6th. It was something that couldn't be avoided and I couldn't be here so that's why we had Mr. Osterlo present for us but I'm here today to speak to you folks and I appreciate your time and your consideration. Per the staff report, you will note that we meet all of the terms and conditions for deviations. I just wanted to make sure that was, was understood. As you discussed, there are three remaining deviation requests. One, to have an entry awning sign. Number two, that the size of that entry awning sign is larger than the code uh, uh, permits. And a corner neon sign at a six foot height. We would ask to keep it simpler that we deal with each deviation separately would ask the board to vote on the first one and then we'll move to the second one and have discussion and vote on the second one then move to the third one rather than try to vote on all three of them at the end of presenting three different yeah. Yeah. deviation requests. That's fine. Do you want to present all three deviations at once? No, ma'am. We'd like to present one and then ask the board to discuss and vote. That's up to the board if that's how you guys okay. want to handle it. Anybody have an issue with that? No. Nope. Okay, great. The first uh, we will take up is the having two signs on the north side of the building. The neon sign on the north side is already approved. Both signs together fall well below the 54 square foot maximum. The two signs together equal 36 square feet. It was brought up in the last meeting, a question was brought up, why didn't you just make the neon sign bigger? And that's a great question. However, that neon <laughs> sign is our logo that's trademarked and part of our trade dress. And you can't just put it on a, uh, a CAD and start stretching it. At three feet, it falls out to be six feet wide. That's the way it falls out. We're not gonna change the, the logo. That's, that's our logo. Um, 
And I'm sorry, sir, just so we're clear, are you talking about the deviation request to go from no, 36 feet to 72 feet? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about the, having the two signs on the front and that the combined, the those two signs, the awning and the neon sign that's already approved, is 36 square feet, well below the maximum. I was addressing a question that was brought up in the last meeting on July 6th which was, why didn't they just make the neon sign bigger? Why do they want two signs? Why not just have a bigger neon sign? I was trying to address why we didn't do that. Okay? Now, I want to show you some exhibits. This is our proposal. As you can see, there's the, the entry canopy with the neon sign that's already approved above it. So you can disregard the, uh, the window awnings that have been uh, not approved. So this is what it would look like. You can go to the next one, Jake, please. So here's a close-up of it. This is what we're asking for, to have this canopy sign with our neon sign above it. Once again, collectively, it's about 36 square feet. Okay, Jake. This is what it looks like from the right-of-way. I don't know about you. I can't see it. Once again, when you look at the staff report, you will notice that it points out in the staff report that where we are is about 390 feet from the right of way. And we're not talking about large signs. So they're very <coughs> discreet, if you will, from the right of way. Now, you talk about two signs being redundant. We're not setting a precedent here in the scenic corridor. There are several, maybe many, businesses with two signs. Here are some examples. All of these are two signs at the same lease space. Can we get the next one, Jake, please? Same thing here. So we're not asking to set a, for the board to set a precedent. All we're asking you to do is allow us the same thing that has been allowed in other areas of the scenic corridor or that exists in other areas of the scenic corridor. The most recent is Grimaldi's. And as you can see, there's a sign on the side. There's also a sign in the front and a canopy with their logo on the canopy. And my understanding is that's a fairly new installation. <coughs> so once again, all we're doing is asking for some of the same consideration that other businesses have in the corridor. And I can answer any other questions about the awning sign. Anybody have any questions? And is this, are, are we discussing just the deviation to have the sign, the second sign, or are we talking about the size of it? No, ma'am, well? we're not talking about the size it's at this point. All we're talking about is the sign. I, I apologize. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just whether to have the sign is what yes, we're talking about. It's, so yeah. it's, it's either you have the sign or you don't have the sign. Right. It's not, can you make the sign smaller and <coughs> have the sign on the canopy? Right. Okay. So it's a yes or no or... And then I guess if we approve having a second sign, then we get on to whether the size is acceptable or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what we do? Yes, that's what, what I think we were requesting. That's what I think we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I so just wanted to make the, sure. So, okay, so we're, we're, we're talking about, okay, the sign on the canopy and mm -hmm. then afterwards whether the, si the size of the sign. Okay. That's my understanding. Okay. Is that yours, Sydney? Yes, and that's your okay. request, right? That we proceed that way? Last yeah. time I spoke, he fussed at me. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, again. just. <laughs> he was just trying. We can't speak. I'm not going to fuss at him. Okay. I'm not going to speak. We just can't speak over each other, so we can yeah. have a clear record. That's all. Okay, staff, uh, uh, Tim, if you would concern the first deviation request I'm going to read from the staff report is a deviation to allow three canopy signs on the north side of the building and two canopy signs and a building sign on the south side of the building. That's presented as one deviation. Yes. Thank you. We did that for advertising purposes. We don't want the ad to be a mile long. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so the board, if we so chose, we can break that down into a two separate issues or not? Well, the two okay, in the front and the two in the back were denied at the last meeting. Yeah. So ah, the one okay. in the front of the is staff what that remains. Was, I'm one of the staff that was not here yes, at the sir. last meeting. The window awnings are not in question. They're not <clears throat> up for conversation today. Okay, Those so have been the three denied. canopy signs on the north side has already been disposed of. Two, two of them. The two, two of them. Two of the yes. three. Well, I mean, that, that deviation has been disposed of. Mm -hmm. The two canopy signs and a building sign... <coughs> Well, there's one canopy sign that's left here. Yes. May, may I, sir, Two please? of the three. May I? Okay. The ones over the windows were d denied last time. What we're talking about is the canopy that goes on um, the, entry. the entry line. line. The entry. I mean, you, you can call each one of them a, can, a deviation, so there's like seven of them. But okay. we, we try to keep the ad short, yeah. short and sweet. Yeah, okay. Now I understand. The... The staff report is the staff report from last month that's in this agenda. Mm -hmm. The new agenda reads, a deviation to allow for a canopy sign over the entrance on the north side of the building. Yes, yes. I updated the staff yeah, report. I just wanted to make sure we before we had any motion that we, we didn't had an update accurate. the ad. That's correct. We yeah. didn't, because it was continued, Understood. we didn't update the ad. Understood, okay, great. Okay, so mm -hmm. does everybody on the board understand what we're yes. doing great mm -hmm. all right so uh does anybody have any further questions for the applicant or staff i do i have one question yes sir the total height of the sign that is on the canopy is identified as 40 inches and i heard somebody say something about trademark or this is the way it is and we either do it this way or no, no sir I didn't we that. are we aren't addressing that right now okay Okay, what I was saying is at the previous meeting, Jake, if you can go to the sign that shows the, the front of the building. So uh, my, my, question is, my question is going to be, it appears that the letters are falling within the allowable sizes and heights, except the way they're combined the height of the sign is 40 inches and the current permissible is 36 inches. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. That's yes, sir. Basically, because there's three he, lines. He addressed, he addressed the question. To, <laughs> oh, One at a time. That's basically because there's three lines. So that's why it's so but, tall. But, but the height, whether you've got two lines. Can't exceed 36. Cannot exceed 36, right? Right. Okay. But we're, we're not even considering the height deviation at this moment. Okay. Yeah, we're well, we're not considering anything right now because nobody's made a motion, and that's what I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to get us to. Okay, but, so. But what I'm he's presenting, let's put it that way, yes. is just to have the sign at the end of that canopy. Yes. Period. And yes, so, sir. again, what, what we need to do is dispose of the deviation request to allow a canopy sign over the entrance on the north side of the building. That is correct. Yep. Yes. So, I believe we've all asked our questions. Is anybody prepared to make a motion? Okay, in the interest of moving the meeting along, let's put that deviation request <laughs> to the side. Can, may I ask yes. a question? Just, just to confirm, canopy signs are not allowed in the scenic corridor. Well, you can have one sign, and they've already got the building sign. So you start talking about a sign on a canopy. It is allowed. It is allowed, okay. We treat it as a building sign. Whether okay. it's on the building or on the canopy, it's a building sign. So we would be allowing, am I getting this correct, just technically, we would be allowing two building signs versus one, which is the current requirement. Yes. Or restriction, whatever you want to call it. Yes, that's Maximum. correct. It just has to be a canopy sign. I described it, but yes, it's yes. Two, two signs where one is allowed. Would it be fair to ask if it's that sign the way it is on that canopy is that Acme House Acme Oyster House's logo that it patterns on all of its buildings does it, all of its buildings have 
a canopy like that and have that sign just like that on it? Is that a standard? We, have, we have several locations that lend itself to have an entry awning. Where we have an entry awning at those locations, for instance, we don't have an entry awning at the French Quarter location. There's four foot of sidewalk, right? But the other locations that we have an entry awning, it is that identical awning with that identical sign. Second question. Yes, sir. Is in those instances where you have that identical awning with that identical sign, do you also have that other sign above it? Yes, sir, either above it or on the side. And we showed examples of that uh, to the board members that were present at the last <coughs> meeting. I, I, I understand that. I apologize. We did not bring those photographs with us. So uh, let me clarify. If this is your logo, then you, were, you talked before about not being able to make the logo smaller, any smaller. With the neon sign, yes, ma'am. With just the neon Any sign, larger. but this you could make it smaller. You don't want to, but that no. <laughs> right. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm trying to determine the hardship here that would constitute well, a deviation. And, and I guess it, it would be helpful. You guys have the criteria for granting a deviation. It's laid out in the staff report. You can find it on. In chapter 13 on yep. page 8. Seen it. May I speak to that, ma'am? Absolutely. What we have is a small company with six or seven locations. And we have a sign package, we have trademarks, and we have a trade dress. Our hardship is that not allowing this gives us a different exterior image than what we have in similar locations. And therefore, in a certain sense, allows us not our trade dress for our concept. Now, the other hardship could be there are many instances of two signs up and down the corridor as we evidenced in pictures. All we would ask is that the rules apply to us just like they apply to everybody else. Well, the, the, the examples you showed, sir, are a, a signage under a master signage plan for a development, both of them that you showed. So we don't even approve signs on, for developments that have master signage plans if those signs are within the requirements of the master signage plan. Those get approved by staff. We never see them. So the only reason that we're even looking at this is because these things that you're requesting are outside of the master signage plan for this development. I see. I know there's a master so sign plan with this development, but yep. I didn't realize. So it's not really a apples to apples comparison, if that makes sense. Okay. No, the, it doesn't to in me. The, in it the process. To me, but, but well, <laughs> in the, in the so. process of, of how they're approved. It you know, at the, at the end of the day, you've got two signs in a bunch of locations and not two signs in this location, and they're all in the corridor. When you boil it all down, they're all yep. in the corridor. and. We have to ask for a deviation for two signs, and there are two signs in many other locations. Thank you. Yeah, that's a point I meant to make. This Seascape Town Center does have a master signage plan, and the building sign in the front was approved by staff under that master signage plan, just so the two members that weren't here last month, that's how that sign's already on the building. But their master signage plan does not cover this, like Green Boulevard, Silver Sands, and the market shops, does. Okay. Well, if we're going to stick on this one, does anybody want to make a motion? I remind everybody, I'm not supposed to make motions as the chair, so that's why I keep asking <laughs> for someone else to do it. Well. Um, all right, well, I'm going to try to move things along here. So let's put that one to the side, and I think it probably makes sense to put the, well, let me ask you all this. Do you want to take up the 36 inches, uh, the, the deviation request to go from 36 inches to 40 inches for the same sign? Will that help us move along? I I'll make a motion that uh, if the other deviation were approved, Forty inch would have to meet at least the thirty-six inch requirement. 
Well, Jane? we haven't heard about the deviation request from 36 to 40, so we need to let that We need to let them, okay, on. speak to that. that. Okay. We make a motion on that. Okay. All right. Would it make sense, though, to go to the other the side? The third blade sign? First. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's what I want to try to do is just get some motion going, a movement going here. So, well, um, if he could just talk, then we could just, if he could just talk on, on that, the, the, the size of the sign. Okay. Then we could make a motion. Okay. And just get that done. All right, Mr. Applicant, if you could uh, tell us about uh, the second deviation request, which is the uh, request to uh, exceed the 36 inch minimum and instead have a 40 inch tall canopy yes, sign. Thank you. Th thank you very much. If you look at the sign at the front of that awning, from the top of the A, the apex of the A, all the way down to the lap, to the bottom of uh, where it says New Orleans is 40 inches. We're 390 feet from the right of way. The letter A, which is the largest subcomponent of that sign, is 22 inches high. And once again, as staff has noted, we're 390 feet from the right of way. Four inches difference across 390 feet is less than imperceptible. I would aver. Would you consider taking one line of the copy out and increasing the height of your letters so agony is more pronounced? You know, you know sir, it, our, our logo is Acme Oyster House New Orleans Seafood. I'm so to, no, trying to ask questions. And, 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 I, and I appreciate that, and, and, and I would love to tell you, yes, that would be easy, but then it, it gets into us toying with the logo and other people being able to do things with the logo. We have to present it a certain way every time we present it. But like I said, we're talking four inches, and that, that, is, that, that 40 inches includes the gaps between the three lines of text. So there's a gap between Acme and Oyster House, and there's a gap between Oyster House and New Orleans Seafood. So if you take the gaps out, I'm sure that we're well within the 36 inches. Okay. okay. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Well, if you say that four inches is, is, is imperceptible, then what, why would it matter if it's four inches less and you'd be within the regulations of the code? There are, there are two issues at, at, at play there. It would then not match the rest of those awnings that we have everywhere else. And that awning exists. So it would mean me, our, our company, replacing the entire awning. Right now that awning doesn't show anywhere. We have it covered. The master sign plan for the seascape development says that lettering on awnings is approved and all that. And our mistake, make no mistake about it, our mistake, we put them into production. We believed because there was a master sign plan that it was merely a formality to get a permit. So we released the companies to produce them, and while they were in production, we filed for the permit. I'll make the observation that everything but the top part of the letter A fits into the to the dimension. It's only the top part of the letter A that actually is a, an issue, and I recognize that the sign already exists. Um, I'm not sure that you would, going from one location to another, be able to remember that the uh, sign was 40 inches tall versus 36, but. Mm -hmm. New Orleans is a long it, drive from here, but uh, anyway. Proportions of the sign within yeah. the within the canopy so, makes a difference. Yeah. but I think I think what we're dealing with here is a, a a business is trying to get open. They've got a sign that uh, there's a, in my opinion, a relatively minor deviation. Again, it's if uh, the E is 17 inches tall and the A is 22 inches tall, that's uh, by my architect's math is five inches difference, and that would mean that the rest of the sign is actually 30. Five inches tall. Am I right? So, I think is like the business open? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Business is open. It is open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess.
guess I need to pass the gavel to get so it. Are we, here, so, well, are we now looking at both deviation requests? And, and no, we want to take one? we want to take one at a time. I just thought maybe going okay. to the second one might make it a little easier for us to get rolling here. So this yeah. is whether if we approve to the other deviation, we would be okay with the height See, of the that's sign. The thing. Yeah, and I tied. Well, I'm okay with nice. making one person making the motion for the first deviation request. Um, for the canopy sign over the entrance, and then obviously we'll, that will determine whether we do the second one. But um, if we approve the deviation well, of the height from 36 to 40 inches, and then we don't approve the sign at all, then I, I think that's pretty obvious what the outcome is too. So, so just whichever one we want to move forward with. I I motion to um, not approve the 40 inches, but. Do approve the 36 inches at the sign. If it will well, that's, be reduced. Yeah, that's yeah. per code. So. Per code. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Sorry. So, it is, I'm sorry, that's a motion to deny the second variance request to move from 36 to 40 inches? Yes. Okay. But you're not moving to approve the second sign at this point? Is no. That correct? That's my understanding of your motion, Lourdes. Yeah. It's, okay. it's basically not approving the 40, the deviation that allows it to be 40 inches versus. Okay. okay, so we have a motion in a second. To deny. To deny, yes, I'm sorry. A motion to deny the second deviation request. Um, do we have any more questions or comments? I, I um, have not had a problem seeing the smaller sign that's above there. So I, I don't know that I would having the sign be bigger on the funny. Okay. And it, I know that this, the picture they put up made it so that you couldn't see in the picture what the sign looked like, but the, you know, have that picture and actually being on Highway 98 are very different. Yeah, yeah. understood. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion to deny the request? Aye. Say aye. aye. All opposed to the motion to deny the request. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, should we go back to the first deviation request? This is for a canopy sign over the entrance on the north side of the building. So the motion, I make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a second? Given the second deviation. No second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the canopy sign. Uh, any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Aye. Okay, we have a 2-2, two, two, so the motion fails. Technically, David. Yeah, um, you got to vote. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll vote uh, in favor of approval. However, okay, it still, still fails. fails. So, um, Sydney, do you want to explain why that failed? Yeah, so that fails because we didn't have four concurring votes to approve the deviation. Good Is there going to be any public comment? Uh, are you all... Okay, I, I apologize. I was under the impression that you all were part, of, part the of the applicant. applicant. Yeah. So uh, you have had an opportunity to present. So are you, Mr. Nettles, are you here on behalf of the applicant? or? We I'm sorry, we assumed yeah. you were here with the applicant. Well, uh, I am here to support the applicant, but I'm not the applicant. Okay. okay. Well, I, I think we should take. Certainly, we can. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Please come forward. My name is Jay Nettles. I'm the general manager of Seascape Resort. We're the owner of Seascape Town Center and the landlord for Acme. And I'm just here to confirm that we support the proposed signs for Acme. Uh, we have reviewed in detail all of the signs, um, and, and we believe them to be appropriate. Uh, we have a, a huge investment there and arguably as much at stake as anybody in, in having the center be uh, all that it can be. So uh, we want it to be very upscale. We want it to have a very good look, and, and we believe that <clears throat> that these signs that ACME is proposing are, uh, as Jeremy said, that they are, uh, they're trade dress, they sort of identify a business that's been 
in existence for over 100 years. Uh, my, it's, it's not something they're creating for this location. They're just trying to es establish the fact that this is a brand and that, and that it's been in existence for a long period of time. So, uh, <clears throat> so we're in support of it. Uh, we think, uh, just from my personal observation, there are a lot of similar signs on other businesses uh, some of them, many of them larger than these signs, many of them closer to the road, more visible than these signs. Uh, there is a, a uh, provision in the Seascape Town Center Master Sign Plan uh, for businesses to have awnings with, with signs or words on the awnings. So I'm not really sure uh, the the canopy sign the the awning signs that were denied at the last meeting to me appear to be uh, authorized by the master sign plan. I'm not sure what, why that was not approved. It, it does say with the approval of uh, the landlord and the county, so that may have been the provision, but. Um, so uh, I'm just here to say that, that we have looked at this, that we think it, that we support what ACME is proposing and that, and that we think the, the premise that this is somehow out of bounds or somehow will set some precedent um, for, for other signs is not valid because there are already numerous signs uh, that, that are that are similar, if not larger and and closer to the road. So it, it's a little bit, I guess, puzzling that that signs would be approved and deemed appropriate at one location and and not at another. But I understand the board has to make these decisions. So I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Tim's going to grab the master signage plan so we can definitely. I said t uh, Mr. Brown is going to go grab the master signage plan in case I there's any. Right here. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. okay and since, uh, and I apologize again for misunderstanding um, Mr. Nettles that you were uh, not here as part of the applicant team. Um, Sydney, just. Not, not necessarily encouraging the board to reopen the matter, but am I correct in saying that any matter that we have voted on is not entirely closed until the meeting is, is adjourned? Correct. So if, if there's any uh, desire on the board to reconsider the action, we certainly can do that. Um, you want to see the master sign? I'm not inclined to do that necessarily, but I do want to know if, that, if these signs are permissible within their master signage plan, then that changes the entire. Okay dynamic of what we're um, just to give the staff a chance to look at this I uh, see a couple ways we can do this we can either take a brief recess um, or we could uh, if everyone was comfortable with it we could consider the third deviation request um, while I'm good with that the staff yeah. Yeah. okay Tim Tim are you comfortable with that uh, doing your research while we consider the third deviation request sure. okay This deviation request is for a corner neon sign. The code requires a maximum height of three feet. Well, to put a three-foot sign, three-foot high on the corner, it would look like this. And if you look at this board, you can see that this looks terrible. So what our proposal is, is to turn it on its edge. And now, rather than have it three feet high by six feet wide, it's now three feet wide by six feet high. Very, very more tasteful than the other sign. And the other sign would have been approved at the last meeting. So you have a look per code versus our proposed look of the sign. Also, uh, this would not set a precedent in the scenic corridor. Jay, can I have that? last photograph that's about a 10 or 12 foot corner sign that's 10 or 12 feet high that exists in the scenic corridor once again all we ask is in a sense of fairness to allow us in a tasteful manner 
less than what has been allowed somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, do we have a motion? Are there any further questions of? Um, well, I, again, in proper parliamentary procedure, we're supposed to have a motion on the floor before we invite public comment. I apologize, I m mishandled the uh, uh, comment a second ago, but. Um, um, I would move that we approve the sign, the deviation for this sign. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the third deviation um, for what I'm calling the blade sign. Um, do we have any uh, public comment? Mr. Nettles? Nothing. Okay. Okay. In that case, all in favor? Aye. Do we, uh, anybody want to talk? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we I have any further? No, I didn't okay. know if, we had, if anybody wanted to discuss it, but if we're ready to vote, that's fine. Okay. All right. In that case, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay. In that case, I'm voting for. So we have two other folks that have not uh, voted for. Okay. Four. four. Okay, so that that one is approved. Four to one. Four to one. Yeah. Okay, Tim. And I'm sorry. While we're waiting on Tim, Mr. Nettles, uh, that document that you provided us, would you like it made an exhibit to tonight's proceedings? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. It appears that. The master signage plan covers blade signs. It's under canopy signs, which is the same thing that Grand Boulevard, Silver Sands, and the market shops. Under awnings, it doesn't say anything about signage. It just talks about the actual awning is allowed and how it, big it has to be and all that. It does talk about under canopy 21 inches by 42 inches, which is exactly the same as Grand Boulevard, Silver Sands, and the market shops. Those are the only signs, main identification, building signs, under canopy signs. Nothing about canopy signs. So the blade sign would have been a, a would have been allowed under, approvable. Yes. Within the master let, signage. Let me. Confusing. Yeah. Um, well, I think are these the the signs that are in this image, this photograph? Mm -hmm. That say oysters, gumbo, oh, right. That's po boys, and good. jambalaya. Those were are those considered to be on awnings or are those canopies? Yes. Those are considered to be awnings. awnings. Okay. I guess. Because it does appear that, difference. well, there's both of these exist in this document. There are canopies there's and there are awnings. Are they defined? Um, standard building awnings mm -hmm. are provided by landlord. Awnings to include signage applications, lettering, etc., must be provided by tenant and are subject to landlord and Walton County approval. Yeah, see, that's that's a little. What is this document that you provided us, Mr. Nettles? Is Sage. it part? It's a master sign plan. Okay, it was it. Okay. It's a Seascape Town Center master sign plan, which okay. will approve so uh, the we county. Now, don't the the, the other um, businesses in that shopping center have awnings over the windows? Uh, but they are different than the awnings over the windows in this. They don't have that balance, and so it was their option to do that, but they did not elect to do that. Okay. So what are we Excellent question. Because they determined that the boards on it were signs that they created in addition to the It's under the master's right. right. That's right. If they were denied on the basis, well, we should be less prepared if they were denied on the basis. Well, the the different guidelines. Yes. Yeah, it the can. masters. Okay. It can. The master signage plan was considered and approved by this board. Uh, it's within my memory, which is not good. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the details of it, quite honestly, but. Um, yeah, November 3rd, 2016. Yeah. That's the point. Once we approve it, we don't hear it again unless it's something yeah. that's not so, in compliance with the, this plan. Yeah. So I'm confused. Well, 
If everybody's okay with it, I'd like to ask the applicant a uh, question. Um, sir, the the canopy, let's see, is the sign above the canopy sign, so the building mounted. The neon sign. Neon sign. Yes, sir. Is that in place? Yes, sir. Okay. And yep. approved. And approved. And the canopy sign is in place and approved. No, sir. The canopy it's sign is in place. No, it's in place. I'm sorry. It is in place. It is in place. It is covered. It's covered. Yes. We were, we were cited by the county. Yes. Okay. And immediately covered it. All right. If I might say, sir, that as you can see from the master sign plan that was approved, everything that we've done and presented to the county and presented to this design review board was contemplated in that master sign plan. So what we're asking for is really not any different than what was previously approved from a conceptual standpoint in the master sign plan. Sir, I'm sorry, could you um, state and spell your last name so we'll have it for <laughs> okay. the record? My first name is Jeremy, common spelling, J-E-R-E-M-Y. My last name is pronounced W. However, it is spelled D E capital B as in boy, L I E U X. And no, I'm not Cajun. My heritage is proper French. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so noted, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay. um, I, I will throw this out here for the board, I guess. Um, so I was not aware of the master signage plan might have addressed these issues. We already have votes on all of this, but if the master signage plan did yeah. not require that a deviation come before this board, yep. then mm -hmm. this board didn't have jurisdiction to hear it. So that's, that's something right. I need to research. And it'll take me longer than this meeting to do that. Um, so I guess I would suggest, the, unless you've heard something that would make you change your previous let, let votes, me make so. Let me make one statement, please. Yes, sir. Please the see. June board meeting was canceled. We've deferred this matter from the July board meeting. This is now the August board meeting. Yes, and now sir. we're talking about deferring this yet, yet again. Sir. Yes, okay. ma'am. So if you'd let me finish. Just yes, ma'am. So I apologize. So if you guys um, will give me time to research this, I can meet with um, the applicant's attorney and speak with her about it and come up with a decision before we have another board meeting and report back to you guys on what that is based on what's in the master signage plan. Okay. Another, can, can I ask a clarifying yes. question? If this is deemed to be permissible within their master signage plan, and we, it should then not have come before it you. will resolve itself and we don't even need to hear right. about it again. Yeah. And so this could be yes. to your benefit, so I wouldn't I, oh, I, complain. I, I, I don't doubt that it's <laughs> my benefit. I'm just saying that, that we're th three months into this approval process and have done everything that's been, been asked of us, we would just ask that this be done in an expeditious manner. Or do that's everything all. I can well, to make the, sure it's handled expeditiously. What happens if the master plan does not cover it? We've already made our votes, so whatever so we, those votes are, <clears throat> the votes have been would I, Since so. the meeting isn't adjourned, Mr. Chairman, is it worthwhile to ask for another vote based on this new information it may put the rest of it at a moot point. Would, would yeah. that change anyone's vote, whether or not this is in the master signage plan? Well, we haven't seen the master signage plan, and I would rather rely on your opinion uh, as yeah. to what's in there exactly. than right. to yeah. make a yeah. vote right. based on something I haven't read. But I guess, uh, you know, regardless if there was or wasn't a master signage come, plan, I don't know which would your vote change? change? No, and here, here's yeah. my it's reasoning for that, just so you know, so not trying to be a jerk, but the reason master signage plans exist is to create some consistency, a family of signs and some consistency throughout a development. So that's why people get signage, master signage plans approved. When they're approved, I consider that, by this board, I consider that good for that development. I also assume it's going to be consistently applied throughout the development, but that's beyond our control. I think that's the intent. But if, if a certain developer doesn't, specific developer doesn't do that. That's beyond our control. Um, so that's why I wouldn't change my vote. 
because I respect the master signage plan process. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to everyone? I don't know if I you like it, but hopefully. The the What's that? I said I wouldn't change my vote on the height of the sign. Mm -mm. Me neither. Because that's, that's code. And that the master signage plans have to be consistent with code. Mm -hmm. Necessarily. No, they don't. They don't. No. No, they don't. That's no, they Silver don't. Sands, Grand Boulevard have a lot of differences from the code. And that's and other one of the reasons other for the master signage plans do too. It's yeah, that's one of the reasons for this board. Once you adopt it, you're basically doing a de, fa de facto deviation. They present this is what we want to do, and you guys say, Okay, you can do that. Point, That's why Silver Sands can have a sign. When and it came right. to the right. drill sign, you know, that came to us as a deviation because and it that was, was taller than 36 inches. Well, and, and the master signage plan didn't allow for it to be taller than 36 inches. Well, it may, may I ask a question? 36 inches, so our vote uh, was uh, right hang on just one second, sir. We just have a lot of stuff going on, so just one second. Okay. I'm sorry. Is that any new information, Sydney? No. no. So okay. I, I was just speaking with the applicant's attorney. I'll look at this as soon as possible. So if it is covered by the master signage plan, it should have never come before this board. And Thank you. the vote would be null. But the height is definitely not covered by the well, master I, signage plan. Okay, but that's okay. fine. I'll look at everything and determine what was or was not. Okay. So we've taken, we have taken action, as I understand it, we have taken action on all three deviation requests. The first two requests may be influenced uh, by, the outcome of that will be influenced by the, the Madam Attorney's determination. And the third deviation request was approved, so that one is put to bed. Um, okay, um, I don't see any further reason to entertain this agenda item, and I think we should uh, probably move on to the final agenda item. So does anybody disagree with that uh, here on the board, Madam Attorney? No. no. Staff? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Madam Attorney, are you good for we're at another hour by? Do would you like another short no, recess? I'm good. Okay. 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 Thank you though. <laughs> all right. Um, the last item on the agenda for this evening is public workshop to discuss amending chapter 13 of the Walton County Land Development Code, specifically those portions pertaining to signage and lighting. Tim Brown, do you have anything to say to us? Well, I just included the chain, the ordinance changes from the last workshop. There were some changes we took out the changes that i had made to the window signs that was removed the language is the same we added let's see under uh page five under uh materials we added fiberglass or high density urethane um, based on uh, uh, boardwalk designs recommendations uh, same thing on materials on page seven. We added fiberglass or high density urethane, and we added raised individual ratted letters up to six inches shall have a minimum rise of three eighths inches. Up from six to twelve will be one three quarters of an inch, and from twelve to twenty four uh, will be. That's oh, cut off will be, oh, <laughs> you only did half of this one too. I think it was an inch or something. Um, is one inch. There are some pages missing here. It was double-sided, but only one side got, got, got printed. And then we added it on page nine under materials, fiberglass or high-density urethane. Um, I don't see the pages they were left out, but we took out brass lettering under uh, the type of materials for signs. There are some brass letters lettering in master science plans. Obviously, that wouldn't be affected by this, but we did remove that. 
I'm not sure if that was all the changes because all the pages aren't here, but those were the major changes we made from the, from the last workshop. We're missing the even numbered pages. On, on page nine two, this was kind of significant, I think. If under permitting where it says the proposal shall be submitted with the development review package. Yes. Um, that's so that we can see the signage yes. when we approve the development, yeah. the, the building project, mm -hmm. part of the project. So that's a small change in size, but significant mm -hmm. in meaning. Okay, under page, well, y'all may not have it. Under page four, under the main identification sign, we've made the change. The width of the base of the sign should be at least 80% of the sign face. That's to make it a monument sign. Uh, I took out the changes um, for, um, maybe we already did this, but I'll go over it. For uh, flags, now it says the official flags of the United States and the state of Florida are accepted provided that the display of flags should be limited to not more than these two flying from a single vertical pole no taller than 40 feet. So what came out was flags approved by the Design Review Board. Mm -hmm. That's being... So they can only do the U.S. flag and, and the state of Florida. And or the state of Florida flag on one both. pole. Both. Or, or both. If they yeah. can just do U.S. flag. Yes. Either or, or both. You're right. Before we go any further, does everyone have a copy of the full revisions, or is it just the odd number, number pages? We're just, yeah, yeah, we're missing all the even numbers. Number it's only yeah. the odd it's number okay. pages. Do you, do you yeah. guys want to go forward um, and have Karen print out copies, or do you want to continue this? What, do you, what would you prefer to do? Um, if I could ask the question, I know we come to this on every one of these processes. Um, how many meetings do we have in front this of us? Is, this is the first of three, so we won't, if we, you guys just want to continue it, we won't even count this as the first of three. If you'd rather. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. that'd be fantastic. Yeah. This that'd meeting's going on kind of long. And Especially yeah. given our copier issue. Yes, okay, do we have a motion to that effect? To continue so this to the next. And I we second. have a second, Mr. Okay, a mo motion and second to continue this item to the next meeting. September. The September. DRB meeting. All in, uh, any comment on the board? Any public comment? <laughs> Won't do that again. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Yeah. I've forgotten to do that once that I can recall. Just once. And it was the wrong one. I was once. so nervous about that last week. Like, did I get public comment? <laughs> when do you do that? That's okay, I ended up with a copy. That is, uh, that came from that. That's Mr. Nettles. Was yeah. this yes. Mr. Nettles? So okay, that's, 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 that's for the record. Okay. So, can you feel just mark that as an exhibit? Just a public comment. Our Thank public you, sir. Oh, Thank you all. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. <laughs> motion Second. carries. No public comment on that one, right, Sydney? Oh. Right. <laughs>